Section 9 of Rackety Packety House and Other Stories. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Rackety Packety House and Other Stories by Francis Hodgson Burnett. The Little Hunchback Zia, Part 2. All through the day he watched them men and women and children who belonged to one another who rode together on their beasts or walked together hand in hand women on camels or asses held their little ones in their arms or walked with the youngest slung on their backs he heard boys laugh and talk with their fathers boys of his own age who trudged merrily along and now and again ran forward shouting with glee he saw more than one strong man swing his child up to his shoulder and bear him along as if he found joy in his burden boy and girl companions played as they went and made holiday of their journey young men or women who were friends lovers or brothers and sisters bore one another company no one is alone said zia twisting his thin fingers together no one no one and there are no lepers the great caesar would not count a leper perhaps if he saw one he would command him to be put to death and then he writhed upon the grass and sobbed again his bent chest almost bursting with his efforts to make no sound he had always been alone always always but this loneliness was such as no young human thing could bear he was no longer alive he was no longer a human being unclean 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 at last he slept exhausted and passed his piteous prostrate childhood and helplessness the slow procession wound its way up the mountain round toward the crescent of bethlehem knowing nothing of his nearness to its unburdened comfort and simple peace when he awakened the night had fallen and he opened his eyes upon a high vault of blue velvet darkness strewn with great stars he saw this at the first moment of his consciousness and then he realized that there was no longer to be heard the sound either of passing hoofs or treading feet the travelers who had gone by during the day had probably reached their journey's end and gone to rest in their tents or had found refuge in the enclosing khan that gave shelter to wayfarers and their beasts of burden but though there was no human creature near and no sound of human voice or human tread a strange change had taken place in him his loneliness had passed away and left him lying still and calm as though it had never existed as though the crushed and broken child who had plunged from a precipice of woe into deadly exhausted sleep was only a vague memory of a creature in a dark past dream had it been himself lying upon his back seeing only the immensity of the deep blue above him and the greatness of the stars he scarcely dared to draw breath lest he should arouse himself to new anguish it had not been he who had so suffered surely it had been another zia what had come upon him what had come upon the world all was so still that it was as if the earth waited as if it waited to hear some word that would be spoken out of the great space in which it hung he was not hungry or cold or tired it was as if he had never staggered and stumbled up the mountain path and dropped shuddering to hide behind the bushes before the daylight came and men could see his white face surely he had rested long he had never felt like this before and he had never seen so wonderful a night the stars had never been so many and so large what made them so soft and brilliant that each one was almost like a sun and he strangely felt that each looked down at him as if it said the word though he did not know what the word was why had he been so terror-stricken why had he been so wretched there were no lepers there were no hunchbacks there was only zia and he was at peace and akin to the stars that looked down how heavenly still the waiting world was how heavenly still he lay and smiled and smiled perhaps he lay so for an hour 
and then high high above he saw or thought he saw in the remoteness of the vault of blue a brilliant whiteness float was it a strange snowy cloud or was he dreaming it seemed to grow whiter more brilliant his breath came fast and his heart beat trembling in his breast because he had never seen clouds so strangely purely brilliant there was another higher farther distant and yet more dazzling still another and another showed its radiance until at last an arch of splendor seemed to stream across the sky it is like the glory of the ark of the covenant he gasped and threw his arm across his blinded eyes shuddering with rapture he could not uncover his face and it was as he lay quaking with an unearthly joy that he first thought he heard sounds of music as remotely distant as the lights is it on earth he panted is it on earth he struggled to his knees he had heard of miracles and wonders of old and of the past ages when the sons of god visited the earth glory to god in the highest he stammered again and again and again glory to the great jehovah and he touched his forehead seven times to the earth then he beheld a singular thing when he had gone to sleep a flock of sheep had been lying near him on the grass the flock was still there but something seemed to be happening to it the creatures were awakening from their sleep as if they had heard something first one head was raised and then another and then another and another until every head was lifted and every one was turned toward a certain point as if listening what were they listening for zia could see nothing though he turned his own face towards the climbing road and listened with them the floating radiance was so increasing in the sky that at this point of the mountainside it seemed no longer to the night and the far away peans held him breathless with mysterious awe was the sound on earth where did it come from where praised be jehovah he heard his weak and shaking young voice quaver some belated travelers were coming slowly up the road he heard an ass's feet and low voices the sheep heard them also had they been waiting for them they rose one by one the whole flock to their feet and turned in a body toward the approaching sounds zia stood up with them he waited also and it was as if at this moment his soul so lifted itself that it almost broke away from his body almost around the curve an ass came slowly bearing a woman and led by a man who walked by his side he was a man of sober years and walked wearily zia's eyes grew wide with awe and wondering as he gazed scarce breathing the light upon the hillside was so softly radiant and so clear that he could see that the woman's robe was blue and that she lifted her face to the stars as she rode it was a young face and pale with the pallor of lilies and her eyes were as stars of the morning but this was not all a radiance shone from her pure pallor and bordering her blue robe and veil was a faint steady glow of light and as she passed the standing and waiting sheep they slowly bowed themselves upon their knees before her and so knelt until she had passed by and was out of sight then they returned to their places and slept as before when she was gone zia found that he also was kneeling he did not know when his knees had bent he was faint with ecstasy she goes to bethlehem he heard himself say as he had heard himself speak before I too I too he stood a moment listening to the sound of the ass's retreating feet as it grew fainter in the distance his breath came quick and soft the light had died away from the hillside but the high floating radiance seemed to pass to and fro in the heavens and now and again he thought he heard the faint far sound that was like music so distant that it was as a thing heard in a dream perhaps i behold visions he murmured it may be that i shall awake but he found himself making his way through the bushes and setting his feet upon the road 
he must follow he must follow howsoever steep the hill he must climb to bethlehem but as he went on his way it did not seem steep and he did not waver or toil as he usually did when walking he felt no weariness or ache in his limbs and the high radiance gently lighted the path and dimly revealed that many white flowers he had never seen before seemed to have sprung up by the roadside and to wave softly to and fro giving forth a fragrance so remote and faint and yet so clear that it did not seem of earth it was perhaps part of the vision of the distance he climbed his thought took no cognizance there was in this vision neither distance nor time there was only faint radiance far strange sounds and the breathing of air which made him feel an ecstasy of lightness as he moved the other zia had traveled painfully had stumbled and struck his feet against wayside stones he seemed ten thousand miles ten thousand years away it was not he who went to bethlehem led as if by some power invisible to bethlehem to bethlehem where went the woman whose blue robe was bordered with a glow of fair luminousness and whose face like an uplifted lily softly shone it was she he followed knowing no reason but that his soul was called when he reached the little town and stood at last near the gateway of the khan in which the day-long procession of wayfarers had crowded to take refuge for the night he knew that he would find no place among the multitude within its walls too many of the great caesar's subjects had been born in bethlehem and had come back for their enrollment the khan was crowded to its utmost and outside lingered many who had not been able to gain admission and who consulted plaintively with one another as to where they might find a place to sleep and to eat the food they carried with them zia had made his way to the entrance gate only because he knew the travelers he had followed would seek shelter there and that he might chance to hear of them he stood a little apart from the gate and waited something would tell him what he must do almost as this thought entered his mind he heard voices speaking near him two women were talking together and soon he began to hear their words joseph of nazareth and mary his wife one said both of the line of david there was no room for them even as there was no room for others not of royal lineage to the mangers in the cave they've gone seeing the woman had sore need of rest she thou knowest zia heard no more he did not ask where the cave lay he had not needed to ask his way to bethlehem that which had led him again directed his feet away from the entrance gate of the khan past the crowded court and the long low wall of stone within the enclosure of which the camels and asses browsed and slept on at last to a pathway leading to the gray of rising rocks beneath them was the cave he knew though none had told him so only a short distance and he saw what drew him trembling nearer at the open entrance through which he could see the rough mangers of stone the heaps of fodder and the ass munching slowly in a corner the woman who wore the blue robe stood leaning wearily against the heavy wooden post and the soft light bordering her garments set her in a frame of faint radiance and glowed in a halo about her head the light the light cried zia in a breathless whisper and he crossed his hands upon his breast her husband surely could not see it he moved soberly about unpacking the burden the ass had carried and seeming to see naught else he heaped straw in a corner with care and threw his mantle upon it come he said here thou canst rest and i can watch by thy side the angels of the lord be with thee the woman turned from the door and went toward him walking with slow steps he gazed at her with mild unillumined eyes does he not see the light panted zia does he not see the light soon he himself no longer saw it joseph of nazareth came to the wooden doors and drew them together and the boy stood alone on the mountainside trembling still and wet with the dew of the night but not weary not hungered 
not athirst or afraid, only quaking with wonder and joy. He, the little hunchback Zia, who had known no joy before since the hour of his birth. He sank upon the earth slowly in an exquisite peace, a peace that thrilled his whole being as it stole over his limbs, deepening moment by moment. His head drooped softly upon a cushion of moss. As his eyelids fell, he saw the splendor of whiteness floating in the height of the purple vault above him. The dawn was breaking, and yet the stars had not faded away. This was his thought when his eyes first opened on a great one, greater than any other in the sky, and of so pure a brilliance that it seemed as if even the sun would not be bright enough to put it out. It hung high in the paling blue, high as the white radiance, and as he lay and gazed, he thought it surely moved. What new star was it, that in that one night had been born? He had watched the stars through so many desolate hours that he knew each great one as a friend, and this one he had never seen before. The morning was cold, and his clothes were wet with dew, but he felt no chill. He remembered. Yes, he remembered. If he had lived in a vision the day before, he was surely living in one yet. The Zia, who had been starved and beaten and driven out naked into the world, who had clutched his thin breast and sobbed, writhing upon the earth, where was he? He looked down upon his hands and saw the cracked and scaling palms, and it was as though they were not. He thrust back the covering from his chest and saw the spots there. But there were no lepers, there were no hunchbacks, there were only Zia and the light. He knelt and turned himself towards the cave and prayed. And as he so knelt and prayed, the man Joseph rolled open the heavy wooden door. Then Zia, still kneeling, beat himself softly upon the breast and prayed again not as before to Jehovah, but to that which he beheld. The light was there, fair, radiant, wonderful. The cave was bathed in it. The woman in the blue robe sat upon the straw, and in her arms she held a newborn child. Zia touched his forehead to the earth again, again, and again, unknowing that he did so. The child was the light itself. He must rise and draw near. That which had drawn him up the mountainside drew him again. The child was the light itself. As he crept near the cave's entrance, the woman's eyes rested upon him, soft and wonderful. She spoke to him. She spoke. Be not afraid, she said. Draw nigh and behold. Her voice was not as the voice of other women. It was like her eyes. His body, through his blood, through every limb and fleshly atom of him, he felt its steel, new life, warming, thrilling, wakening in his veins, new life. As he felt it, he knelt quaking with rapture, even as he had stood the night before, gazing at the light. The newborn hand lay still. He did not know how long he knelt. He did not know that the woman leaned toward him, scarce drawing breath her wondrous eyes resting upon him as if she waited for a sign. Even as she so gazed, she beheld it, and spoke, whispering as in awed prayer. Go forth and cleanse thy flesh in running water, she said. Go forth. He moved. He rose. He stood upright. The hunchback Zia, who had never stood upright before, his body was straight. His limbs were strong. He looked upon his hands, and there was no blemish or spot to be seen. I am made whole. He cried in ecstasy so wild that his boy's voice rang and echoed in the cave's hollowed roof. I am made whole. Go forth, she said softly. Go forth and give praise. He turned and went into the dawning day. He stood swaying and heard himself sob forth a rapturous cry of prayer. His flesh was fresh and pure. He stood erect and tall. He was as others whom God had not cursed. The light, the light, he stretched forth his arms to the morning sky. 
some shepherds roughly clothed in the skin of lambs and kids were climbing the hill towards the cave they carried their crooks and they talked eagerly as though in wonderment at some strange thing which had befallen them looking up at the heavens and one pointed with his crook surely it draws nearer the star he said look as they passed a thicket where a brook flowed through the trees a fair boy came forth cleansed fresh and radiant as if he had but just bathed in its clear waters it was the boy zia who is this one said the oldest shepherd how beautiful he is how the light shines on him he looks like a king's son and as they passed they made obeisance to him end of section nine